Thank you very much, uh, Nelson, for the generous uh, presentation. Um, first of all, it's, it, it's an honor for me to be here at the uh, NDN. You were one of the first person that I met when I arrived as an ignorant person here in Washington. And you gave me some real good lessons for that. And I, I really appreciate that, that first attitude. And, and also the organization you, uh, you have here, connecting public policy and politics, it's, it's something really uh, useful for any country. And uh, yes, I'm arriving here as a, as a very ignorant person um, with no um, experience on, 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 on diplomatic world. And, uh, and let me add something that, uh, that uh, makes me uh, fear the future. I'm arriving here as appointed by President Piñera, who is the first uh, center-right uh, president in, in Chile uh, elected uh, since uh, Jorge Alessandri in 58, but with one difference. Uh, Jorge Alessandri, who appointed uh, Ambassador Gutierrez Olivos, a, a, a brilliant ambassador here. But Jorge Alessandri was elected with 32% of the votes in the times where we didn't have an institutional uh, stable framework in Chile. Uh, President Piñera was elected with 52, so 20% more of the people, more than half of the, of the people voting for him. So I wonder who's, who was the last ambassador uh, sent by a center-rightist uh, president in Chile, probably in the 1900s, and in the 1900s, the people didn't vote at all. The president were elected in a very few uh, uh, amount of people. So I, I'm very uh, uh, aware of the responsibility we have here, and, uh, and of course, trying to learn uh, from Washington uh, organization and people. Uh, I'm very happy to, uh, to be here. We, we were delaying this presentation from the very, uh, because of different reasons and, and the binaries and the bicentennial and the visit of President Piñera. And, uh, but I'm really happy to share some, some thoughts here. Of course, th this is going to be a presentation focused mainly on, on economic figures because, because we tend to, to reduce artificially uh, the reality of a country to some economic figures. I'm not an economist. I have a lot of respect to economists, but we are still uh, on that trend, and I uh, apologize for that. After the presentation, we can uh, discuss any other political uh, issue or social uh, uh, question you may have for, uh, for me. So let, let's start with this. Uh, of course, the first, the first slide must be the miners. <laughs> must be the miners. And this is a, a terrific story for Chile. It, it's making me easier to be an ambassador. <laughs> to, to pass a message of what Chile is, it's, it's really easier now we have this story. Uh, because I believe that people like you, the, uh, the intellectual elite, are, are well aware about what Chile is. But after this story, the, the public at large is aware of some things about Chile. And I, I believe that, that the, the message now, uh, the, the easier message to transmit to the to the people are these words. First, leadership. And we are very proud, and I was a personal a witness of what President Piñera did with, uh, with this story. From the very beginning, we were uh, extreme, we were desperate. We didn't find them. After, after 10 days, after 15 days, we were everybody working on new technologies on how to find them. Probably the, the, pers the, the possibilities of finding them alive were 2%. And, and uh, we received instructions of, of, of bringing more technology, and the, uh, the final news will be definitely bad news. And President Piñera were kept pushing for that, putting all resources, financial resources, human resources, and, and he risked everything with no political calculations. I saw it from the very beginning, and we, everybody said, he's crazy, he's committing a political suicide. And so leadership. But not only leadership by the miners, uh, by, by, the, by the government, but the, also by the miners. Uh, we, we learned after that that the miners were able to follow in uh, leadership inside and organize themselves for, for 
uh, rationing the, the food, for uh, may, uh, keeping the environment clean, uh, for uh, having a, a, a friendly relationship among them. So leadership of our working class people, and we are, we are very, very proud about that. Courage, of course, courage from them. Accuracy, the rescue was, was a message of, of what the things should be done in terms of, of, of a technical challenge. And professionalism, we believe that we have a good engineers in Chile, we have good schools, we have good universities, and a, a world-class people, uh, not only lawyers, not only uh, teachers, <laughs> but economists, but engineers. And, and after that, we receive a lot of help from the US. We, re we receive uh, technology from Pennsylvania, the, uh, the driller uh, device was sent by, by us, by, uh, by my DCM here, Roberto Matos, uh, to Chile, and it turned out to be the quickest uh, machine for reaching to the miners. So we received some, some technology, some engineers, but the people in charge of the whole operation were pure Chilean. Uh, we are extremely proud of having this result with Chilean engineers. Transparency is also a word now because uh, we have free press, uh, all the media were uh, putting attention on this, uh, TV stations, radios, and, and it would make a, a mistake, everybody would, would have known immediately. Uh, and, and, and that's the way Chile is working, uh, developing a, a system of, of a pre free press from many years ago, and now we could show that Chile is an open country, uh, you, you can know everything is happening um, at a second. And transparency is also a word that has been growing in Chile since last uh, years. And, and, uh, and the, the uh, chapter of the miners was a way to, uh, to prove that. Democracy. Democracy because of the same thing. Uh, it, it's uh, the government uh, won by a small margin, but the, the unity of all political sectors behind rescuing the miners was also a, a, an incredible thing for us. There were no political division, no social divisions. This was like, like you know, the soccer world team, uh, the soccer national team playing a, in, a, in, a, in a World Cup, like that, but, but with, a, with a social component. And we are extremely proud of having all political sectors uh, uh, contributing to that. And it was very clear that even the opposition, who has a role to play, the opposition has a role to, to oversight the government, uh, worked with the government to, uh, to rescue the miners. And we're extremely proud of that. So that's, that's the message after the miners. I hope not uh, continue boring the American people with this story, but we are bringing the capsule uh, probably to the Smithsonian uh, Museum uh, very soon. And uh, the, some of the miners are coming to, the, to California, and uh, one of them ran the New York Marathon, and so we have this whole thing uh, going on again. Um, going to uh, to uh, going back to economic uh, figures, uh, one of the one of the reasons why we are here is that we believe that Chile Chile is a, it is an amazing country. We have three or four pillars: an open economy, democracy, uh, human rights. Uh, but something had to happen uh, for uh, for having myself here and President Piñera on, on the government palace, and we believe that. People wanted Chile to regain a strong uh, economic performance. For example, here are amazing figures. Between 86 and 97, we had an incredible 7.8 .8 growth rate uh, annually. And that was an incredible uh, moment for, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for uh, developing Chile. Uh, our... our um, our per capita income tripled during the last 20 years. Uh, but then, after the Asian crisis and, and 2009, uh, the growth rate uh, went down to 3.4%, and, and if you take the last four years, it went down to 2 point something. The crisis, different crises, Asian crisis, and then the, uh, the 2008 crisis made this happening. Productivity went down, um, job creation went down, so the unemployment rate went up almost to 9% in the, in the last 10 years. So th we had a feeling, and this is not, this is not, a, uh, this is not a trying, 
this is not a, an intent of, of bringing political divisions, internal political divisions. It's just to explain why we are now on November 2010 with, 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 with the reality we have today. Uh, I believe that Chile had this, the feeling of, of, of a country slowing down, a, a good country with incredible things in the past, slowing down on its uh, growing wraith path. Um, here is the, the uh, I'm sorry, that's a, uh, a graph showing that uh, path. And then you, if, you, if you look at 2007 to 2010, there's 2.8%, which is kind of a modest rate for historical Chilean um, uh, record. Uh, but now, but now we have good, good news today, good news today, and we hope, I was in Chile last week, we hope that we could continue during the last years with these figures. Uh, if you take the figures of 2010, there is an incredible regaining of growth. Uh, GDP is, is growing at 6.5%, and the, uh, the, uh, the uh, ex expected annual uh, growth is about 5% at the end of the year. Um, if you look at the consumer price, the, uh, the inflation rate is it's, it's controlled 1.2%. The unemployment rate is, is already going down from 9% in 2010, the first quarter to 8.3%. Job creation is, President Piñera promised, a very, very a challenging promise to create 200,000 uh, 200, jobs a year and uh, we all believe that was a really a, a risky offer. And today, with this year, we are creating 300,000 uh, jobs, and that's, that's a reality. So happy because of that. The uh, account balance of the GDP, the debt, we're gonna look at that, is 1.6, very controlled, and figures are, are smiling for Chile on 2010. International perceptions. Uh, all, all of you probably know about about Chile on this uh, on these uh, areas, but let's let's take a look of the great country we believe we have uh, on economic freedom. Uh, Heritage Foundation uh, works on this index. We are uh, first in Latin America on corruption perception index. First in Latin America, human development. First in Latin America. Uh, Human development, you know better than me, that includes education, includes family uh, environment, many, many other things, factors. Competitiveness index, we are losing some competitiveness uh, strength, but still first in Latin America. Uh, Global competitiveness report, first in Latin America. Peace index, uh, the source is vision of humanity, three, a third, uh, Easy in doing business, this is something we are working on. The government is, is trying to address this problem. Number four in Latin America, uh, Chile is concerned about that. Uh, so quality of life, number three in Latin America. GDP is number one, uh, uh, per capita income number one after, after Panama, if you consider Panama is a little bit higher than us. Um, here we have other graphs showing showing good things about Chile, the economic freedom, we are uh, number 10 in the world, competitiveness number 28, over Spain, Portugal, and Brazil, and over Italy. Uh, and uh, th this, these are figures very good for us. Let's, let's go for some figures on micro, mic microeconomic uh, fundamentals. The fiscal deficit, this is something that we, we are really proud of, of the previous government too. Uh, Chile has been very responsible on 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 the management of the of the central government debt. We are we are net creditors today. Uh, since 2008, this graph I think the, the, the debt burden Chile is even better than than uh, Luxembourg, Norway, uh, Denmark. Uh, so it's been a very responsible management of the debt during the last during the last 20 years. And, and this graph, after 2005, Chile became a net creditor. So it, it's, a, it's a different situation than many other countries today with the financial crisis. Uh, 
Then another issue that it's, it's, it's impossible to avoid uh, on 2010 is the earthquake we had at the beginning of the year, uh, just before the uh, new government took office. In, in, um, in February 27, we had a, an incredible earthquake, the fifth in the, in the, in the, in the history of mankind in terms of violence. Uh, so we also we had to face this problem. Um, the magnitude was 8.8 .8 on riskier scale, lasted about two minutes, and it affected the central zone of Chile, which is the most populated zone, Araucanía, Valparaíso, uh, where, where the 75% of the population is located. And then after the earthquake, we had a tsunami series of tsunamis that devastated uh, several several coastal uh, towns. And uh, we lost, here we have some, some figures after that. Let, let's, let's keep on, the, on this ranking, it's impressive. The, Chile has this, this, uh, this uh, unhappy record. We have the, the, the strongest uh, earthquake in the history, which is the uh, uh, 1960, uh, in Valdivia earthquake, um, magnitude 9.5, then Alaska, Sumatra, Kanchaka, and then this one in 2010, the fifth in the history. So everything was settled to uh, have a devastating effect on, on Chile's uh, population. And we had it uh, a, a big impact. Uh, the percentage of the GDP that is costing to Chile is about 15%, with inf infrastructure losses about, about 20 billion, which is a huge amount for Chile. We lost infrastructure, we lost schools, we lost, we lost uh, uh, hospitals, and the macroeconomic effect is not here. The earthquake uh, reduced, of course, the economic growth on the first quarter. Um, on the first half of 2010. And, but the reconstruction effects are, are boosting the economy today. And uh, we also have some, we also receive a lot of friendship from the US, uh, from the American people. We were able to collect money and help helping the devastated zones. And uh, there are a lot of projects coming on uh, for uh, rebuilding the, the uh, infrastructure are uh, underway in the second half of 2010 and, uh, and next year, 11 and 2012. But the infla inflationary effects, effects have not been significant till now. Let's move to, to the main goals we have beyond the earthquake, uh, beyond the miners, beyond the earthquake, beyond the new government. W what are the main goals of, of the whole Chile? Uh, I believe that growing at five to six percent a year because everybody is clear now in Chile that if you grow at that um, path we are we will be able to create those 200,000 jobs a year and we will <coughs> achieve <coughs> this incredible uh, goal of becoming a developed country uh, increase the investment from 22% of the GDP to 28% of the GDP in 2014. Poverty, poverty is an issue in Chile. Uh, Chile and, 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 and the previous government has been very successful in reducing poverty from 36% to uh, 12, uh, 13% during the last 20 years. And the extreme poverty under UN standards from 12% to 2% about that. But then, because of the slowing of the economy, <coughs> the poverty has been on the same stable figures during the last two or three years, in, uh, and even is increasing by 2% on the last year. So one of the goals is with this, this economic management to reduce poverty completely, to overcome poverty in the next five to six to eight years. Um, and, and, and becoming a developed country be becoming a developed country, if, if for that we mean uh, reaching to the standards of, of some of the southern European countries like Spain, like Portugal, like Greece, before the crisis, because Greece today is uh, facing so many troubles. Uh, if we achieve that, 
with a per capita income about about twenty two thousand twenty four thousand dollars with the best better distribution of income with with strong social policies we will feel that we are achieving the level of a developed country let me go for some review some uh, legal reforms or, or initiatives that the new government is putting in place um, during this this term uh, it, is, it is a ch short term like the American term is five uh, four years and uh, we are almost with one year done so so there are left three years for achieving all the promises that we are made in making to a uh, to the public, it's uh, difficult. Uh, first thing, on, the, on social policies, uh, there's a, a, a dream of having a social social ministry. We have social policies coming from finance, from labor department, from the uh, economic department, and uh, there is a there is a uh, there is an idea of of creating a social ministry for addressing more effectively the the, the social policies. And uh, we are working on that. We are selling uh, that idea to Congress. Congress is tied. It's 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 uh, it's almost 50 percent government and the opposition. So any idea on legislation should be very uh, very good idea for for reaching to the enough consensus to be passed. There is no majority. Uh, on the government, but there's no minority. This is it's a, almost a, a, a perfect tie on both uh, chambers. The finance and, and tax policy. The the uh, there is another idea of of having a consumer protection services service to oversight the products that banks and financial institutions are offering to the public because there is a sense that there is some kind of abuse on. On credits and 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 all the uh, products that are uh, offering to the public. So this is a, a strong idea in Chile. Of course, banks are w concerned about how much regulation we are going to receive uh, from that. But this is another crucial uh, bill in Congress. Political reforms. Some of these ideas are coming from previous governments. The idea of President Piñera is finally pass these laws. One is is modifying the constitution for allowing. Chileans abroad to vote, with, which we don't have today, and uh, it requires some um, constitutional amendments. I uh, had an opportunity to, to help on some of the drafts on that. And then uh, there is an idea of modifying the, uh, the, um, the uh, dates of the political, of the presidential elections for having a, a, a quicker uh, transition period. Uh, on on competitiveness, competitiveness and, and uh, small and medium businesses, there are a couple of ideas that are very good. I had an opportunity yesterday to uh, talk in Atlanta with Minister Fontaine, the Minister of Economy. Uh, we all are uh, concerned, and we all agree that small and medium, medium businesses are key for the uh, the uh, the economy. Uh, for the uh, a, a distribution of income for everything. So w what to do here? And there's an incredible idea of reducing the time of starting a, a new business because we are, we are doing bad here, badly. Uh, the average of the OECD countries, Chile entered into the OECD on January this year, is about 14 days for studying a new business. And Chile is an extreme bu bureaucratic country, and we are taking about 24 to 26 days for studying a new business. A lot of bureaucracy there, tax form, legal things, you know, uh, public deeds, you know, lawyers had a lot of to do with this. Our fees are involved in our, in that bureaucracy. And there is a revolutionary idea of reducing this uh, dramatically to uh, to uh, 14 days. Even even the last announcement of President Piñera is going back to six days, and the research shows uh, uh, that that having an impact like this could really boost the economy because people are willing to to uh, uh, to innovate and to create new businesses and entrepreneurship is 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 uh, pushing moving forward. Uh, there is another bill in Congress. 
uh, there is a, there is a couple of things. There is a, a program, very interesting program. I selected this one to show you how the new government is managing the idea of entrepreneurship. There is a program called Startup Chile, which is uh, going to the, the, the places where we believe there are good entrepreneurs, world kind of entrepreneurs, like Silicon Valley, for example, offering a subsidy of, of for, uh, $40,000 and selecting best, the, the best projects and bring, bringing that people to Chile, settling them down in Chile, offering help for having them starting new companies in this environment in Chile. And we are succeeding with that. We already have 50 people uh, in this program. They arrive into Chile, they are starting new businesses, and, and there, there is a list, uh, Minister Fontaine told me, there is a list of 200 people wanting to go to Chile with this subsidy in order to, uh, to create new uh, businesses. It's relatively cheap for Chile. Uh, uh, we of course we we ask for 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 uh, reports and 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 and, and uh, st uh, straight oversight over those uh, uh, businessmen. But we are creating this idea uh, of having a critical mass of entrepreneurs in Chile uh, that could bring new air and fresh fresh uh, air to the economy. There is a another bill that's interesting. Uh, creating an incentive, tax incentive to small businesses, just small businesses who reinvest uh, the profits. Uh, if they in reinvest the profits, uh, uh, we'll, we are not going to charge them with taxes, which is an old idea for companies, for large companies. We are deepening that uh, tax exemption to small businesses. And uh, Minister Fontaine is very committed with that, with, with that idea. So we have an environment, we have uh, we have a an, an, an solid institutional framework, uh, democracy, an open economy. We have crossing. We are crossing a good year now with this feeling of the minus, with the feeling of of facing the adversities, uh, and, and with good figures on the economy. And also, we are putting in place new ideas for uh, regaining the growth. So the final, of course, the final golden goal is to become a developed country by 2000. And it's not 2010, it's 2018. That's a, that's a real one. It's not that instant. <laughs> it's a, it can't be today. Uh, it, could be, uh, it could probably be on, on uh, 2018. And uh, another good thing is that we don't have re-election in Chile. Re-election is forbidden. So, so the president is, has its own opportunity to do the best thing he can do, and then uh, another person is going to take the presidency, and we believe that it's a good thing. Of course, there are temptations, or as always, to amend the Constitution when a, a successful president is, is in power, but we are resisting that. We, we, are, we are confident that this is a good system for having a, a, an alternate powers a, and, and a stronger democracy. So that's it for now. Thank you again. Uh, <laughs>